Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to this session on PyCaret. In this session, we are going to do model analysis using various plots available in PyCaret. So without any further delay, let's get started. The first thing we want to do is install the PyCaret module. Once the module is installed, we want to plot our model. Now before plotting our model, we want to create the model first. Now we know in PyCaret only by using this five lines of code we can create a simple model. To get more details on this five lines of code, please watch the first two videos of the PyCaret series. Now in short, what we are doing here is we are importing the inbuilt diabetes dataset which actually help us in predicting whether a particular person has diabetes or not on the basis of various features. Then we are using the setup method which actually help us in preparing our data for the model and then we are using the create model method for creating our model. Now here I am creating a logistic regression model that's why I am passing the abbreviated string as LR and I am storing my model object into this LR variable. Now once I have this model ready I want to plot this model. So before we plot the model I want to take you to the plot model documentation which is again very well documented in PyCaret. You can see they have actually separated the, the graph on the basis of modules. So you have plots and classification, regression, clustering, anomaly detection, NLP, and associative rule mining. Let's quickly go through the classification plots first. So you can see there are a lot of graphs available in classification. All you have to do is use the plot model method and pass your model object and this abbreviated string for the plots. So you can see AUC, threshold, precision, recall, curve and the confusion matrix which we are going to see very shortly and rest of the curves. One more good thing here in the documentation is you have this tabs available here. So if you want to see how the plot looks like you can click on this different tab. So if I want to see the area under the curve plot I can check out here. If I want to check how the confusion matrix looks like this is how it's going to look. If I want to check the manifold learning or the decision boundary I can explore these graphs only by going on this tab and have a quick look at how the graph looks like. Next the regression plots again you have residuals, error, cook distance, recursive future and many more. Again you have a lot of tabs available here so just you can have a look at all these plots. Same thing for clusters you have elbow plot and silhouette plot so elbow plot is one of the important plots in unsupervised learning you can see it is a shape of elbow here. For anomaly detection you have some three dimensional graph like T, S, N, E and U map. For NLP you have bigrams, trigrams and my favorite the word cloud ones. So if you want to see a quick look at the word cloud this is how the word cloud plot looks like. And then for associative rule mining also we have some frequency and distributed plots like here in 2D and 3D. So as you can see a lot of plots available in PyCaret for all the different modules. I'm just going to show you today the confusion matrix one. So of course I'm using the plot underscore model method and I'm simply passing two arguments to it. The first one is my object model and the second one is the abbreviated string. So for confusion matrix it's simple confusion underscore matrix and this is how my confusion matrix looks like. If you want to explore more on confusion matrix I have found a very good article on towards data science. Please go through and try to understand this complex concept of confusion matrix. The next thing we want to do today is interpret our model. Now model interpretation actually in PyCaret is based on sharp values. Sharp values are actually based on game theory and it is uh, designed by Scott Lundberg. Now sharp is a very interesting concept if you want to explore more on it please explore on YouTube or there are a lot of good articles present. What actually model interpretation means is we want to remove that black box things from machine learning, right? So we want to understand our model in a more better way and actually sharply values and summary plot and reason plots helps us in understanding our model better. So what model interpretation does is actually shows that which feature is important in your model and actually in some countries now it's law that you should explain to your customer or client how you are coming to this prediction or to this forecast. So you actually have to show them that which model is important or which feature is important in that model so that your client can understand and all the things can become transparent. So the first plot that I want to show you in PyCaret is the summary plot. Again, I have my model ready in XGBoost and all I have to do here is use the interpret underscore model function. And what I'm doing is I'm simply passing a single argument to this, which is my XGBoost classifier. 
and in output I will get of course all the matrices value for accuracy and AUC recall precision F1 and Kappa and it is by default going to give me the summary plot. Now to understand summary plot we have to see what we have on X axis and Y axis. So on X axis you have the sharp values and on Y axis you have the feature importance. The lowest importance is in the down here and the feature with high importance is on up here. So you can see the most important feature we have is the plasma glucose one, then we have age and body mass index and then you can see some of the low importance of feature. Also this blue and red dots are our observations from our data and this denotes the sharp values. So this is how you know this sharp values or this summary plot helps us in understanding which feature is important in our model. The next plot that I want to show you is the reason plot and reason plots are always plotted at the observation level or at raw level. So here I am taking a single observation which is my fifth row hence observation equals to 4 and instead of xg boost I am now passing a plot argument here so this is my object model argument and now I'm passing a plot argument with the value of reason and then I'm giving a single observation. Again it is going to give you the sharp values and going to show you which features are contributing to this output. So age in years is of course contributing in the positive way and number of times pregnant underscore 8 is contributing in the negative way. Uh, if you want to have a look at one more observation here again I have plotted this and again showing that this feature is important for this particular output for this particular observation. Next is the assign model. So assign model is very specific to the unsupervised learning. So many times in unsupervised machine learning experiments we want to know that to which particular cluster or particular data point belongs right. So here I am importing my jewelry data set the inbuilt data set and I'm using the setup method to get my data ready and if you want to have a look how the jewelry data set looks like it has around four columns and the four columns are age, income, spending, score and saving. Now on the basis of these four columns we want to create some clusters right we want to create clusters of customer that in which particular cluster we put these customers on the basis of these features. So I'm creating a k-means clustering model here by using the create model method and then I will use my assign underscore model method and pass my k-means object to this and now you can see I have one column of clusters which actually show me that this particular row or this particular data point belongs to which cluster and sometimes it is very useful in unsupervised machine learning experiments to know that which particular cluster this data points belong. If you want to explore more we again have very good documentation on assigned model as you can see this is for unsupervised experiments so it is applicable to clustering, anomaly detection and natural language processing. The next topic and the last topic for today is the model calibration. Now model calibration is again a very important topic. Uh, actually what happens that whenever we do a classification problem sometimes instead of predicting the label class we predict the probabilities and if the probability is let's say greater than 0.5 which is by default then we will say this belongs to class 1 and if the probability is less than 0.5 we say it belongs to class 0. But although or sometimes this model may be able to predict probabilities uh, the distribution and behavior of this predicted probabilities may be near to your true data set sometimes it may not be near. Now in those cases we want to calibrate this probability so that we can have better prediction. All right? Now if you do this model calibration in sklearn you have to use a lot of modules, numpy and a lot of functions. But in pycaret again it's very easy you just have to use a single function which I'm going to show you very shortly. Also if you want to learn more on the calibration of the predicted probabilities you can explore this article on machine learning mastery. So what I want to do here is I want to create a decision tree model uh, on my diabetes data set and this time I'm using an ensembling technique for boosting. So once I run this I have my model object DT ready and next thing I want to do is I want to plot the calibration plot here it is also known as the reliability curve. I'm passing my decision tree object model here and the plot is equal to calibration. Here you can see I have a perfectly calibrated dotted line but this is you know this is like a virtual line but this is the perfection that we want to achieve and then I have my adaptive boosting classifier line this blue one. Now if if your predictions are above this then we say that this is underfitting and if your predictions are below this diagonal line then we say it is overfitting or overcasting your predictions right. So in, in ideal scenario your prediction should be around this diagonal line or maybe you know uh, they, they will be hugging this diagonal line. 
So what we want to do next is we want to calibrate this model. So to calibrate, I will use the calibrate underscore model method and I will pass my decision tree object classifier in this. Once I do this, I'm going to plot this calibrated underscore DT by using the plot model. Now here I'm passing calibrated underscore DT to the plot model method and of course I'm again plotting the reliability curve. Now this time you will see that the predictions or the predicted probabilities are much near to this diagonal line. So earlier they are much farther now they are almost like hugging this diagonal line, right? And that's what we want to do because if we have better predicted probabilities, we'll have better output of our model. Alright guys, that's all for today. Thanks for watching. Happy learning and stay safe.